It's the oldest open in Asia. A hundred years of history. The Soler Philippine Open dates back to 1913, when the trophy was won by the American amateur J. R. H. Mason. Stars and Stripes dominated till 1929, when the locals took over. The great Larry Montez won an astonishing 12 times, Celestino Tugo 6, Ben Arda 3. Distinguished visitors include five-time major champion Peter Thompson of Australia. His win in 1964, just one of a host of national titles around the region. In more modern times, another local legend, Frankie Minoza, won in 1998 and again in 2007, paving the way for the likes of Gerald Rosales, Angelo Kay, and the current flag bearer of Philippine golf, Miguel Tabuena. Here at the Country Club south of Manila this week, we celebrate their achievements. A hundred years of history. Malagayang bati, Philippine Open, isang daang taon. For those of you who don't speak Tagalog, that's a happy hundredth birthday greeting from Angelo K, the 2008 champion. And like everyone else at the Country Club this week, former champion or not, he's relishing the occasion. It's a great deal. It's a hundred year, right? So part of history already. So um, every player that participated in this event is, is part of history. It's a hundred year and um, it's probably the, I think, the oldest national open in Asia. It's not just the locals who appreciate the milestone. Maran Mama grabbed his slice of history in 2012. As you know, the Philippine Open is uh, is a very old traditional op uh, open in, 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 in Asia. I mean, <laughs> this is one of the oldest uh, national open being hosted in, uh, in, in Asia. I say to be part of it, I think, uh, 100, 100, uh, birthday, 100 years of playing the Philippine Open, I think to be part of it, I'm very proud to be one of the champions. To be honest, there's not many events in the world that have had uh, a centenary of professional uh, golf championships, so, uh, let alone in the Philippines, let alone in Asia. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm very proud to have won the tournament you know, a number of years ago. And every time I come back here, um, irrelevant of whether it's the centenary, but you know, being the centenary, it's very, very special this year in the field they've assembled. Um, you know, I think it actually does ju justice to the uh, significance of the event. The 2018 Soler Philippine Open with a prize purse of 600,000 US dollars is the richest in event history. Oh, it's, a, it's a big deal, you know, it's a, it's a pleasure to be here playing you know, this big event here at TCC. Um, it's always nice, you know, to be playing at your national open and um, it's, it's even nicer that, you know, Mr. Lozano is putting up the money for us um, every year, you know. It, uh, it's a great deal for the Filipinos, uh, for me as well as a former champion. I want to thank Enrique, Enrique Razon for sponsoring this one. I mean, um, it's been really good for Philippine golf, especially now. I mean, um, we have more tournaments and I hope we can attract more foreigners to play in our tour. This week's Open is the showpiece of a revamped Philippine tour, which is leading a renaissance at all levels of local golf. Prominent businessman Enrique Razon is the driving force. Well, for the Philippines in particular, my, what I envision really is to develop the professional tool, to give youngsters something to look forward to and something to strive to and to shoot for. Because before that, we had no more tour, I'd say maybe 10, we used to have a tour in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and it died away. So I figured that young kids are not gonna want to take up golf if there's no future. So I decided instead of helping junior golf or amateur golf to organize and, and uh, sponsor the tour so that they have something to shoot for, something to look forward to, to have some future in golf. And then go on like what's happened with the Korean ladies uh, and go on to bigger tours. And so we're really focused first on developing the Philippine tour and expanding somewhat around Asia. 2002 Open champion Canadian Rick Gibson is a longtime Philippine resident and works as a junior coach. 
he's confident it's all moving in the right direction. Talent-wise, I think we're, we're right there. Um, the Thais obviously are the, pretty much the cream of the crop right now within Southeast Asia. I think talent-wise, we, we're not too far away. Um, we're, we're trying to create a program here so that our, young, our younger ones can, uh, can start to compete with the Thais. And once we, when, you know, they're amongst the best in the world. Uh, that's kind of what we're trying to get to. So let's have a look at a leaderboard. Looks reasonable enough for an opening day. Eight people at par or better suggests a pleasant day out at the Country Club, but it was anything but that. At almost 8,000 yards, the Country Club is a beast. The strategy for the course when we redeveloped it, because we had taken over an existing Tom Weisskopf design, was to come up with a course where there's really no, no relaxing or no pushover holes. That if you wanted to win a tournament here, you had to, you had to think and test your concentration and your mental toughness. Englishman Stephen Lewton clearly likes the country club. He's the defending champion and was one shot off the lead after day one. It's very difficult. It's long, it's windy, the greens are kind of firm. So you're hitting quite long lines into a lot of par fours with a lot of wind. So you have to shape it a lot into the wind to hold your line so it won't roll off the green. At two under par, Singapore's Maran Mama, courtesy in part of this stunner at the signature 17th hole. Feel good. I mean, uh, on this golf course. Anything under par, I think, is, is a, a great score. And it's not easy up there, but to shot a two under, I'm very pleased. Mardan couldn't sustain that pace on the second day as the winds around the country club picked up and made scoring, well, more challenging. Thailand's prom Misawat showed all of his renowned scrambling skills to be the only man in red figures. You know, I mean, I told you about this golf course is long for me, and I mean, and especially it's very windy, and very pleased with my, you know, first two round to play under par. You know, I was earlier this week I was set up for, you know, playing like a couple of overs. Every day I must be very happy. Bisawat managed to maintain his position on the third day, but it was not without controversy. 2015 champion Miguel Taboina held the lead, but post-round was penalised two shots for a bunker infraction earlier in the round. Misawat, despite still worsening conditions, was happy with his day. Well, the wind was strong today, stronger than in the first two rounds, and the pin, some of the hole, the pin was very tough. You know, you can't miss it over, you can't miss on the side. You gotta miss on miss on the good good position to to make yourself can get up and down. So yes, yeah, still very pleased with my my round two over par. But you know I could I could do a couple shot better because I I had a three putt on ten uh, for eagle putt and then I missed a short putt on on fifteen. But you know I had a good up and down on sixteen as well. So this is yeah very pleased with my round. So with one round to go at the Soler Philippine Open, it's Prom Wat leading the way by one over Miguel Tabuena. Guido van der Volk, two strokes back. Now, we spoke earlier about how the Soler Philippine Open is the showpiece of the local tour, in particular this year with its unique 100th birthday. It's also an opportunity to showcase a unique piece of the Philippines, albeit a piece with a slightly more modern slant. It may not be a hundred years old, but title sponsor Soleil's Resort and Casino is rapidly creating a unique history of its own. We're very proud of our different amenities where we have a lot of opportunities to showcase what is the best of the Philippines and in Asia, all in one property. We have 14 restaurants and bars across the property. We are very proud of our 1,740 seat theater that has been host to beautiful world-class musicals and as well as local Filipino acts. 
and at the same time, we have the most grandest and most luxurious retail area uh, that will actually encompass any other property out there uh, that will house signature brands that can only be seen in the likes of uh, high-class locations.